more news after a brief. SCTV now begins its programming day. Yes, it's SCTV, beaming its two cents worth across the nation. Starring Joe Flaherty. Andrea Martin and Martin Short. Television as you've never seen it before. This is SCTV. In the past, Philosophers at Work has dealt with the morality of annihilation. Anorexia nervosa and social interaction. Join us this week for a freewheeling rapid fire special edition of Philosophers at Work with host Greta Kubler Cook. Uh, well, here's one. Um, Rabbi Kushner asks, Why do bad things happen to good people? Clive Bushy. Well, conversely, Greta, why do good things only happen to bad people? Example? Um, Bernard Adler. Easy. On the one hand, Sugar Ray Leonard gets a detached retina. On the other, Leon Spinks mm, gets his driver's license back. Q-E-D. And B-D-Q. <laughs> Plato defined luck as the happy coincidence of necessity and good fortune. Question, who is the world's luckiest white man. Yes, the questions are intriguing. The answers incisive and biting. World's luckiest white man? This is a game for children. Uh, no, Acidophilus, I'm making this difficult. I'm ruling out Gavin McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> no. mm -mm. How can you rule out Gavin McLeod? Yeah, sure. Lazenby. Lazenby, you know who he plays? The only person he's playing is Lazenby. <laughs> And forget more, John Connery is James Bond. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I will not have Roger Moore's name silly. I saw that coming. Yes, the axioms come thick and fast. The concepts laser quick, and semantics go out the window on rapid fire. Philosophers at work with Clive Bushy, Bernard Adler, Acidophilus Abalafia, and host and moderator Greta Kubler Cook. Stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. Now. Did he mean the feather or the pony? This Thursday at 9 on SCTV. She loves me and my amazement. You recognize that cat? That's me, Jackie Rogers Jr. For years I was committed to an up-tempo melody and a chirpy two-step. But now I've been inspired by a new commitment. A commitment that has brought me to what they call the Great Rotunda. It's funny. That's what I used to call the late, great Toadie Fields. <laughs> and it's because of that commitment that I have chosen to toss my hat into the political arena, as it were, and announce my candidacy for the presidency of these dual United States, including Puerto Rico which works out perfectly because my lady happens to have a home there. <laughs> the preceding was paid for by the committee to elect Jackie Rogers, Jr. Hello, I'm Yolanda de Vilbis, and welcome to Melonville Calendar. Next week is Pimsaw Week, Premenstrual Syndrome Awareness Week here in Melonville. Premenstrual stress is a topic that is taking the country by storm and Mellonville is no exception. To participate in PIMSO Week, the Mellonville chapter of the Ladies Auxiliary has lined up an exciting series of lectures and programs and activities to inform the women of Mellonville and their menfolk of this important subject. Monday, to begin the week, there will be a concert at the Art Dome. Um, when you're feeling blue, songs of depression, those of you with instruments, please bring them. Tuesday, a debate will be held at the Armory on the topic, is it all right to kill someone when you have premenstrual stress? Participating will be Chief um, Police.
Police Chief Tug Markle and Attorney Tom Poe of Caulfield Poe and Caulfield. Wednesday. Thursday. A full moon. So stay home and relax. And Friday. Over at the YMCA, there'll be a water retention ballet followed by supervised jogging off the doldrums. Please bring a, a, a pair of large running shoes um, as your feet are bigger. And finally, Saturday, the climax of the week, a lecture by Emile Gide. He's the author of I Slept With a Time Bomb, and I'm sure no one will want to miss that. And now, to launch PM this week, Menstrual Stress Week, we have in our psychodrama corner um, Idella Voudry and Dewar Dweese, two well-known actors, now appearing in the Melonville Masters production of I Do, I Do. They're, they're going to dramatize a few um, situations of uh, premenstrual stress. Honey, I'm home. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? Why don't you fix dinner? You, all you ever think about is you. You, you, you. Uh-oh. And me so hungry I could eat a horse. What'd you say? I look like a horse? No, I didn't say you look like a horse. But that's what you were thinking, big fat pig. Don't start with that again. I'll start with anything I want to, for this is my house also. What got into her? Well, you seem pretty healthy, physically. What's the problem, Mrs. Jones? I do not know, Doctor. I, I feel irritable, and, and I get depressed. Why, I feel I'm on an emotional roller coaster. I get so angry with my husband. Well, I get so angry with him, I could, I, I could just... Bite I, his head off! Why, yes, Doctor, how did you know? I'm married, too, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, what you described to me are the classic symptoms of premenstrual syndrome. Oh, doctor, I don't like to talk about that in front of a man. Not talking about it is half the problem. You see, Mrs. Jones, there are over two million women that have symptoms such as yourself for premenstrual syndrome. Symptoms such as uh, fat, swollen fingers, a face skin that... Just gets real blotchy. And also... <laughs> it's been known to cause manslaughter when women are upset with premenstrual syndrome. Well, is there a cure? Well, knowing about it is half the cure. The other half is talking about it. If I were you, I'd start with your husband. You mean to say that all that time it was your... You can say it. Not talking about it is half the trouble. Are you hungry? I'll fix you dinner. No, no. Tonight, I'm taking you out. <laughs> Thank you, Idella. Do it. Come in, please. 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 Something funny, do it. No. Nope. Well, thank you very much for helping us launch P PIMSO Week, and I can't think of... <laughs> perhaps it was something I said to it. Dewar's not being professional. Well, it must have been something. Well, no, it, there was nothing. It, there was no joke. Oh, well, I'm Yolanda DeVille, from Ellenville Calendar. Thank you very much. Good day. <laughs> thank you. I'd just love to know what it was. Was it my hair or something? On the next episode of Grimley's Fairy Tales, we present the fellow who was the size of someone's thumb. Hey, Ed. <laughs> Want the rest of my peas? <laughs> <laughs>
I've ever needed With before. special guest, I mean, really Alan needed. Alda. Look, I'm your fairy godfather, and I love you, damn it! So join us later this month on SCTV for Grimley's Celebrity Fairy Tales. See you there. <laughs> Jackie Rogers, Jr. on the issues. Our relations with the Eastern Bloc nations, as it were, are like a very bad roadshow production of the Helen Keller story. Zero communication, man. <laughs> Funny story. Now, three weeks ago, I was skinny dipping with a lady friend of mine when suddenly something brushed against my thigh. And for a fleeting moment, I thought, Eureka, Jackie's in luck. But it was not to be. For it turned out to be a dead mackerel, man. I don't know. It gets you thinking. I'm not 110% sure of my facts on this one, but if it's just a matter of a couple of grand, good Lord, I've got that on me. I don't think anyone, not even in the deep south, man, can argue with the fact that this has been Michael Jackson's year. Although, as a performer, my heart goes out to a certain Mr. Lionel Richie. The preceding was paid for by the committee to elect Jackie Rogers, Jr. And now, it's time for Happy Hour. With Happy Marsden, Mike Short, and Sammy the Goose. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Happy, and here's Sammy the Goose and Mike the Bartender. We've got a great show today. I'm going to watch another episode of uh, Six Gun Justice. What's that, Sammy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Before we do anything else, we better get the birthday wishes out of the way, so... Let's roll the birthday crawl and we'll be right back. <laughs> well, we're back. So if uh, it's your birthday, hey, live it up and go for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to have a happy topic later on in the show, kids, but... Uh, I know what you're all really waiting for, and Six Gun Justice. <laughs> so, uh, let's get right to it. Mike? Uh... Beauty! <laughs> well, it looks like that's over with. <laughs> oh, uh, incidentally, uh, do you know, kids, that today's episode is episode 10? Yeah, I, I guess they never sent us episode 9, or maybe it got lost. That happens, you know. Everybody loses things. <laughs> But anyway, uh, last time, uh, a bear was eating them, but I, I guess it, uh, they got away because now they're in a bathtub. <laughs> that ought to be exciting. <laughs> so, uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, Mike? Bro? Shut up, Mills. By the time the sun peeks in that window and through that there magnifying glass, I have a feeling you're going to be in for a real shock. <laughs> right, Blackie? Right, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all going to look real artisanal like. Blackie! What's the matter, Moose? Told you I was waiting for us back in the shack. <laughs> oh, no, here comes that sun. Those clever vermin are really gonna get away with it this time. Yes, especially with that electrical appliance. It's this water. We'll be far from oil. Oh! Oh! Okay? I'm just a little shaken up, though. It would have been a lot worse if we didn't have these rubber soles. 
that I can't keep my shoulder and my foot against the wall and then lift my other foot without falling over. <laughs> I'd say I lost my balance here, mate. Good. Okay, kids, we'll be right back after this short message. This is SCTV, bringing you programming whose time has come. Jackie Rogers Jr. cares about working America. Hi, how are you doing? Please remember me at election time. I'm interested in ruling your land. Factory work can be a bummer, huh? <laughs> Long day, I suppose. The fact of the matter is that foreign countries are dumping steel in the market and completely undercutting American industry. Good Lord, man. And this is... You heard this? I'm floored. Is anybody getting this down? You know, I once worked in a factory for a summer as a teenager, and the thing that I could never get over, man, was the damn noise. Good Lord, the machinery. Bang, 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 bang. And the company don't even have a hot lunch program, they don't. So that if you don't eat enough in the morning, you're hungry again by noontime, you are. With this information in my head that you have given me, sir, I'm angered. You have got to be identifying with the recent smash film starring the wondrous Miss Jennifer Beals. Is Jackie right? Let me guess. You're off to a club to dance the wee hours of the night away, followed by a brisk on-stage shower. <laughs> I'm going to vote for Jackie Rogers Jr. I am. You should vote for him too, you should. The proceeding was paid for by the committee to elect Jackie Rogers Jr. <laughs> Hi, kids. We're back. Now, before we go on, uh, here's a happy tip. Uh, if you're going to try that physics tricks with your friends, uh, don't bet your allowance because it's impossible. <laughs> What's that, Sammy? Right. 
Well, now it's time for who's your favorite character? <laughs> who's Sammy? <laughs> Slate Cantrell. <laughs> oh, very good. You know, Slate Cantrell's real name was Myron Posey Pankle, and uh, Myron's career had many ups and downs, and uh, a lot of people don't know it, but he was an Englishman from England, uh, you know, before abandoning England and uh, taking up a career on the silver screen. <laughs> Anyway, uh, he retired for some reason, and he later resurfaced as an agent, representing big stars like uh, Bishop Fulton J. Sheen and Morley Safer, and, well, uh, he now lives on a houseboat with his companion and friend, Bill. What's that, Sammy? <laughs> no, Sammy, there's nothing about him in the book, but, well, I, I thought it'd be fun to look at that picture of Cheap Laughs Johnson again. <laughs> Yeah. There he is in his hotel room. <laughs> lying there. Well, I guess we should watch the rest of the episode, Mike. Here we go. Six Gun Justice, Part Two. Mr. President, is that they're planning to turn the Butterfield Ranch into the capital of the occupied United States of America. I'm glad you informed me about this nefarious plan, Don Cheaplaffs and Maggie. This is without doubt the second most infamous day in history. Of course, I've got quite a lot on my mind now with this top secret Manhattan project. You see, we're very excited about developing this new atomic bomb. <laughs> Incidentally, I don't want this going past this room, but General Eisenhower tells me that the Allies will be invading Normandy any day now. Look at your pardon, Mr. President. I don't think you should be telling us this. You know what they say, loose lips sink ships. You're absolutely right. Good thinking, my boy. From now on, the word is... Anyway, I'm entrusting you to handle this matter yourself. Now, here's my plan. Go over to the Butterfield spread, and you... Welcome, Emperor Hirohito. Now, that's real imperial, like Blackie. <laughs> you bungling fools. You have misspelled his imperial majesty's name. No matter. It is only a matter of time before this Butterfield Ranch becomes the seat of power for the entire world. And you say you'll have a piece of this post-war action, don't you? <laughs> you being a round eye, of course, will not be able to hold an exalted office. But we will reward you in some fashion. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get to work preparing the new order. Right. Come on, Blackie. Not so fast, Mr. Joe. You got a couple of loyal Americans to answer to first. You see, Washington knows about your evil plan. And in a few minutes, American bombers will be flying overhead to wipe your seat of power off the map. Cover up, Chief Laps. Don't worry, boss. If one of them moves, ah, 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 Lucky, let's get him. Just watch us, Mills. You know, Tojo, I find this real ironic like. U.S. bombers coming to drop U.S. bombs on their fellow American U.S. suckers. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. A delightful paradox. <laughs> hey, boss. I hear them bombers coming. Fine. Our mission here is completed. We must now make good our getaway and bid you sayonara. Let's go. Move. We don't live through this. I just want you to know that I... that I... glad to have known you. Likewise, Miss Butterfield. <laughs> and my pleasure. Here comes the bomb! <laughs> Jack's good. <laughs> She's dated that way, so it'll be good. <laughs> that six gun justice. <laughs> Can you imagine that, kids, being bombed by your own bombers? <laughs> it's really something. <laughs> I wonder how they get out of that one. <laughs> anyway, we're out of time. I'm Happy Marson. This is the goose, and that's all she wrote for today. Bye. Attention all citizens! Heard about the military's huge spare parts cost overruns? No? Where have you been? It's been in all the magazines. Well now, at Manny's No Frills Pentagon Surplus Store, the Pentagon's goof is your gain. Minuteman Circuit Card Assemblies, Air Force price $2,470, your price $170. Got that F-111 fighter in mothballs for want of a gyro housing or a turbine air seal? Not anymore. Pratt & Whitney turbine air seals. Air Force price $3,033.32. Your price $16. Berlillium gyro housings were $4,043. Now $286. Sperry flight simulator diodes regular $110. Now going for cost four cents. And who can't use lamp bulbs? That's right, lamp bulbs. Before the whistleblowers moved in, the Pentagon paid $44 a piece. We're moving them out at cost 17 cents. Don't delay. Now's your chance. There'll never be a better time. We eat the tax. Doesn't that loudmouth ever get tired? Hi. Sick of high-pressure spare parts stores tucked out in some bad neighborhood north of town where you wouldn't be caught dead? Isn't there some place a young urban professional can buy a Bendix gear and pinion assembly in a stylish but casual upmarket atmosphere? At Military Industrial International, we provide just that, with quality now and backup service always. This is a dense thread flush mount head bolt. When it shears, you want to back up there on time not six months later at a discount. And when your security, your family's security, your nation's security is riding on it, isn't it worth $3,782? We think so. We're Military Industrial International, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Sperry Corporation, and proud of it. The Sperry Corporation. Money well spent is the best defense. This is an SCTV News Update with Earl Cannonbear. In a shocking and unexpected move, Jackie Rogers Jr. has withdrawn from the presidential race. This has been a controversial and hectic campaign since it began five days ago at the Las Vegas caucus, where his longtime friend Rose Marie placed his name in nomination. Jackie's campaign has been plagued from day one, when he was unable to complete his own celebrity 50-yard dash to raise funds for his candidacy. But it was his loss of the women's vote due to his public brawling with his common-law wife, Angelique, that sealed his fate. At one point at a luncheon for the Daughters of the American Revolution, Rogers screamed at his wife, and I quote, Look, my whore lady, all you or any woman wants is a charge card. Regular servicing on your demand, and... and... it goes on here. 
So now we'd like to take you poolside at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas where Jackie Rogers Jr. is standing by. Jackie, can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Sir Earl. I'm talking to you from Caesars' private indoor pool, built especially for the magic act of Siegfried and Roy, to enable them to frolic with their live animals. <laughs> A little bit of Caesars history for you, sir. <laughs> they're here, they're here. You took your sweet time, Cherise. <laughs> there you go, Rhonda. Oh, oh well. Jackie, why did you withdraw from the race? Interesting question. I was campaigning in Minnesota, if you will, and I get a call, truth, from the king himself, Mr. Wayne Newton, who has completely <laughs> lost his voice due to desert throat. I mean, we're talking nada. And he says to me, and I can barely understand him, mind you, because of the desert thing, he says, Jackie, what are you doing for the next eight weeks? And I said, why crisscrossing our nation, sir? Why do you ask? And he said, what would you say if I guaranteed you eight weeks, Caesar's Palace, main showroom, opening Tuesday? Well, appealing to his Indian heritage, I immediately replied, me plenty interested. <laughs> <laughs> because when I thought about it, Earl, eight weeks at Caesar's versus four years in Pennsylvania Avenue, I don't know. You know me, EC. I've always hated long runs. Anyone playing Kino at this table? Oh, me do, me do, me do. <laughs> Roxanne, what's your birthday? Let me guess. The 26th. <laughs> I just knew it. Jackie, uh, do you have any words for your supporters, the people who stood by you during the campaign? Earl, I certainly do. Mm. <laughs> A song for our land including the fine folk down Puerto Rico way. What? What is America to me? A house, a home, a land I see. A simple word, democracy. That is America to me. Doreen, give Jack a hand. <laughs> Roxanne, trust me, please. It was an accident. <laughs> Cameraman, please. Gotta see the rest of you. It was an accident. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Uh, Jackie Rogers Jr. has withdrawn from the race. And now let's hope he withdraws from the human race. <laughs> I'm Earl Cannonbear. Good night. This has been an SCTV News Update. And now, a Mellonville Moment, brought to you by the Mellonville Chamber of Commerce.
there's been a Mellonville moment brought to you by the Mellonville Chamber of Commerce.